Hello, hello EMS! It is me, Mrs. Wagner, coming at you with another exciting CCP auction from here at Glencoe High School. Today, we're going to be learning about our civic and community services career and college pathway. So let's get started. So if you're someone who is interested in social studies, English, and communication, and you're interested in service-based careers in the humanities, then you may be interested in the Civic and Community Services CCP. But what exactly do you mean when you say service-based careers in the humanities, Mrs. Wagner? That's an excellent question. If careers like being a lawyer, a psychologist, a social worker, a government official, a teacher, counselor, anything in law enforcement and criminology sounds interesting to you, then this is a great place to start. The information, skills, and experience you'll gain in the Civic and Community Services CCP is gonna set you up for success in any of these careers. But how do I know if I'm a good fit, you might ask? Well, let's talk about some of the important character traits for professionals in these fields. First, accurate self-perception is really important. That just means that you have a good understanding of yourself as a person, and you know how you come across to other people when you interact with them. Similarly, you've got to have respect for others. These service professions are just that, service oriented. That means you'll be helping people in a variety of circumstances and having respect for all sorts of people is essential. You've got to be organized and it's important to have good people skills, right? Good social engagement. That means you can interact positively with others. You've also got to have a good sense of ethical responsibility. That just means that you're gonna do the right thing even when that means making hard decisions. That's really important in these kinds of careers. Now, perhaps you're thinking, this all sounds good to me. How do I get started? Well, let's talk about what the Civic and Community Services CCP looks like at Glencoe High School. In the CCP, you're going to gain a lot of knowledge and skills. For instance, you'll learn about human behavior as you talk about how memory works, how personality works, and as you explore topics like emotions and mental health. You'll talk about the legal system and you'll learn about civil and criminal laws and what trends there are as far as how crime and laws are treated. You'll also talk about society as a whole. Why do we collectively do what we do? What influences how our culture functions? What might be different in other cultures and why is it different? You'll talk about politics and you'll understand where people from all sides are coming from. And of course, you'll talk about this nation where we live, its culture, and how topics like race, ethnicity, and nationality are discussed and experienced here. So you can see that this CCP is jam-packed with incredibly interesting information that will serve you really well, especially if you're considering going into a civic and community services-based career. But now you're asking, what classes do I need to take to learn all this cool stuff? Well, in the Civics and Community Services CCP, you'll start with Civics and Community Services 1. That's the class that you take your junior year. And then your senior year, you'll take Civic and Community Services 2. This is the capstone course for the CCP, so that's where you'll do your senior project. As part of the CCP, you also have to take one additional credit of a combination of these courses. As you can see, these are all classes which explore in greater depth some of the topics we just talked about. So you need to take at least one credit worth of classes. So that means you can either take a single one credit course, such as AP Human Geography, or you can take two half credit courses together, like Sociology plus Psychology. There's a lot of options and you can definitely take more of these classes if you have room for them in your schedule. So lots of neat opportunities to learn about a bunch of things in the civics and community services field. What about after high school? What are my educational options? Well, like a lot of our CCPs, there are a lot of post-graduation options. If you want to go straight to work, there are a variety of local, state, and federal agencies that require only a high school diploma to work for them. Jobs like being a county courthouse clerk, a local government official, an administrative aide, or someone who works for the motor vehicle department only requires a high school diploma. So you could go straight to work after high school if you wanted. Another route you might take is working in law and law enforcement, law or law enforcement. The requirements for careers in law enforcement vary from state to state. 
Some states only require police academy training and others like Oregon require that you have to have a college degree. To practice law, which means becoming a lawyer, you have to finish a bachelor's degree and then get your graduate degree in law. You have to go on to law school. But there are lots of other jobs in law and law enforcement that require a whole mishmash of education. Think parole officers, forensic scientists, psychologists, court reporters, paralegals, law librarians, crime scene investigators, on and on. There's lots happening, lots of options in this field. Switching gears a little bit, if you'd like to go into education, there's also a big variety there. To be a licensed teacher or a licensed school counselor in a public school, you'll need a bachelor's degree and a master's degree. But some private and charter schools only require a bachelor's degree. Other jobs like being a teaching assistant, an administrative aide, or another non-licensed school profession may only require an associate's degree. There are lots of options if you want to go into education. Man, I could go on and on about all of the jobs available in the civic and community services field, but careers like social work, psychology, politics, therapy, public policy, human services, and more, but that would take ages and ages. So if you're curious, do a little Googling. What can you learn about the education requirements and the careers you're interested in? Speaking about education, let's look briefly at some of the local colleges and universities with relevant programs. So I'm not gonna read all of these to you, but you can see that schools like PCC, Oregon State, Portland State, U of O, Linfield, they all have programs related to law and law enforcement, education, psychology, sociology, political science, public policy, human services, and so many more. This list doesn't even cover them all. The world really is your oyster as far as educational options. And your education in this field can start at Glencoe High School. Our civic and community services teacher is Miss Pearson, and she is so passionate and excited about this CCP. You can reach out to her if you have any questions. And of course, you can reach out to me by email or by visiting me in the counseling center on Thursdays. I would love to chat to you about this CCP. All right, that was a lot of information, but I hope that you realized how many neat career opportunities are available in the civic and community services field. If you're excited about having a career that's centered around serving other people, you might be able to find a good one in here. And if you have any questions, again, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I would love to chat to you about this CCP and any of the other CCPs available to us at Glencoe High School.